Hey you guys, Paul here from NZ Truth. So I just want to highlight what is happening here in New Zealand. I don't want to talk too much because I'm not an expert, but I think the videos and what I have found speaks louder than words. So we'll just watch these videos. There are a number of rumours that circulate. Uh, I am present on social media, I see it myself. Uh, I cannot go around and individually dismiss every single rumour I see on social media, as tempted as I might be. So instead I want to send a clear message to the New Zealand public. Um, we will share with you the most up-to-date information daily. You can trust us as a source of that information. Uh, you can also trust the Director General of Health and the Ministry of Health. For that information, do feel free to visit at any time to clarify any rumour you may hear, covid19.govt.nz. Otherwise, dismiss anything else. We will continue to be your single source of truth. We will provide information frequently. We will share everything we can. On that. The egregious example of that appears to be this text which originated in Malaysia and has, kind of, uh, has become a viral hoax in Australia and in New Zealand. How irresponsible is it the people that are sharing that news of a lockdown imminent in New Zealand? Yeah, and, and look, that's the kind of thing that adds um, to the anxiety that people feel. So I continue to share the message. New Zealanders must prepare, but do not panic. Prepare. And, and when you see those messages, remember that unless you hear it from us, <laughs> Um, it is not the truth. Single source of truth? Dismiss everything else? But it turns out all these rumours were correct. And I will have to say I was alarmed uh, at the number of letters that I've received from people concerned uh, that the government would be making COVID-19 vaccinations compulsory. Uh, this is a direct result of deliberate misinformation that's being spread through social media. The government is not making COVID-19 or any other vaccinations compulsory. Um, it's not going to be compulsory, but my message to everyone is it's safe. Um, the government's made it really clear that the vaccine won't be mandatory in New Zealand, and I think that's the case in just about every country around the world. As a government, we will not be making it compulsory. Are concerned about the no jab, no pay, no pay policy of Australia? Are you looking at no, that? No, we're not. Fantastic, no, no. thank you. I believe in vaccination, but not mandatory. Great, thank yeah. you. Great. The government order says everybody who works in MIQ facilities or at the border must be vaccinated against COVID-19. From next week, we start working through the individual data to ensure that those who we expect to be vaccinated have been. If they're not, they're moved on. They're looking at whether they can extend this order in the future. And so port workers here might at some point be moved on from their jobs if they keep refusing the vaccine. If there isn't an alternative, then they're... Um, role in the NZDF will be uh, looked at. They, so, may be, they may be terminated, so, yes. So they, so they may lose their job if they, they don't do. take the vaccine. Yeah. I'm an AUT student and um, we've been informed that if we are to continue to go out on clinical placement, well, um, they're required to get the COVID-19 vaccine unless we have some sort of medical exemption. By about that point, we'll likely be in a position where we're vaccinating everyone. I think when you make things mandatory, it often ends up having uh, the effect of, um, you know, um, having certain populations or communities thinking that it's, uh, you know, this is not a good thing um, and it's uh, infringing on their rights and stuff. It's because we needed one that could make use of the new tool of vaccines and vaccine certificates, a way that we could keep vaccinated people safe from those who have not been. Hi, this is a little message to the unvaccinated. Ugh. You are killing everyone. It's your fault. You're being selfish. So get the vaccine because I'm vaccinated. I am vaccinated. Okay. And so I'm protected because the vaccine is safe and effective. So if you're around me and you're unvaccinated, then you're putting me at, at, well, you're not, you're, no, okay. So you're selfish because if I'm protected and you're around me, then I'm, then I'm fine, but you're, but you're me. Sorry. If you're not vaccinated, then you're not, it's your, um, you're racist is what I'm saying. James, 
I want to ask you, why is it that Jacinda Ardern gets such a free ride in the New Zealand media? I mean, you look at everything from the vaccine rollout, which has been incredibly slow, to the lockdowns, which continue, um, to all sorts of other issues like housing prices, which have been firing through the roof when there was a commitment to build houses that never occurred. Why does she keep getting a pass? Are you living in this weird sort of one party state where you're just simply not allowed to criticize dear leader? Well, I would say that it's that old saying of control the information, control the minds. And what they've got at the moment is a full control of the media. So Jacinda's paid huge amounts. There's been hundreds of millions that have been paid out for the media to try and sustain them and keep them alive. And the issue with that is that now we've got a media that is pretty much demonstrated that they will only push forward promotion of Jacinda and promotion of her ideological ideas. And it's a real issue because when we're talking about serious, serious problems, such as the housing crisis that we have at the moment, where there was a, a guarantee to build 20,000 homes, and I think there's been about 980, and a lot of those have actually been purchased and not built, so they're not actually contributing to the market. Then we're seeing a real lack of follow through for any of her policies, and none of the media will bring it up. And what they do bring up is very, very minor when you consider the majority of the issues that we're facing. I mean, one big problem that I have seen is that we've got a real push towards gender ideology and towards allowing children from the age of five to choose their sex. But we've still got a huge homelessness problem. Homelessness is so the urgent need for state housing has tripled under her in only four years. We've got children that are going to school without any lunches, without any shoes. We've got a mass homelessness problem. And I don't see how the decisions that she's making are beneficial to the country when you're talking about divisiveness. And the media will not pick up on that. And they're funded to not pick up on that. And it's such a shame because I think actually if they did find their own identity and if they were actually strong and courageous in presenting both sides of a narrative then they wouldn't need government funding to stay alive because as we've seen around the world people are more than happy to pay and support media as long as they can see that it's honest and truthful and unfortunately that's not what we're getting here in New Zealand. Uh, just one more question Rita. Well yeah it's the media there I'll tell you every time I'm there I marvel at just how thoroughly uh, putrid it is but you're making it sound like New Zealand is our own San Francisco the gender ideology madness the the racial politics the complete uh, uh, inequality in wealth where you've got uh, housing prices soaring in some areas and then you know people on the, on the lower socioeconomic uh, categories really struggling for the basics are uh, is is what's the future of New Zealand given that really you do seem to be a one party state at this point? Well, what I'm seeing here is a real rise up of, of people. So even on the weekend, we had the no jab, well, not on the weekend, on Thursday, Friday, we had the no jab, no job lawsuit that was happening in Wellington in the High Court. That's still under discussion and under discussion from the judge. So we haven't heard back on that yet. But across the road, so we had hundreds of protesters standing at the High Court campaigning for freedom and for freedom of workplace. And across the road, we had the new Governor General being sworn in. And Jacinda was standing there. I, I ended up walking across the road. She was a couple of metres away from me. There was about one person that one one everyday person standing there nobody cared nobody was interested in what was going on because they were across the road campaigning for freedom and i think we're seeing a real shift in new zealand here and even as you were talking about rowan with the maori community we're seeing a real shift towards unity of people going hold on we've been promised so many things nothing's been delivered and now we're talking about taking away our freedom and so now we're seeing these these groups start to unite so i'm personally really excited i actually think that i can see a real change for the first time in many many years towards people realizing that this isn't about giving control to this one party this is actually about standing up as individuals and taking back our freedom and taking back our democracy so it does excite me as a citizen i think that we're finally seeing the change that we've needed for such a long time well Chantel baker we're going to keep talking to you to watch those changes and make sure they are happening because new zealand certainly deserves a lot better than it's getting at the moment lots more to talk about we will do it next time thanks so much Chantel baker for coming on outsiders so you basically said this is going to be like well, it's almost like I, you probably don't see it like this the two different classes of people if you're vaccinated or if you're unvaccinated you have all these rights if you are vaccinated that is what it is so yep yeah that is what it is so yep yep concerned about the no jab, no pay, no pay policy of Australia. Are you looking at no, that? No, we're not. Fantastic. No, no. Thank you. I believe in vaccination, but not mandatory. Great. Thank yeah. you. Great. So the no jab, no pay 
is mandatory. That's what she's making it. That's what they're trying to do. Now they've already made it mandatory in for frontline workers, and that comes into effect. I think the first of November. And she's just said it. She's happy for the segregation, punishing the people that aren't vaccinated. If you're vaccinated, you can move around freely. In Auckland, we can't even leave Auckland. Even once we go to level one or whatever it is, if you're not vaccinated, you won't be allowed to leave Auckland. And no, they're not making it compulsory to have the vaccine, but if you don't, then you can't be a part of society. That's what they're bringing in. So is that, I mean, did they lie? Uh, yeah, kind of, no, yeah, uh, they did. That's a blatant lie. They're causing segregation. They want a battle between the vax, between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. So there we can see the censorship in New Zealand. The governments have bought the media. The media aren't telling us the full truth of what is actually happening, and they are censoring everything. So what I want to highlight in the news and how they're censoring our comments. If we come to here about the V. A woman has stated whatever she's stated, but she's pro-vacuum, that's what I call it. And now if we go down to the 22 replies, and we have two. So most relevant is selected, so some replies may have been filtered out. Some, just about all of them. <laughs> this is what they're doing. They are censoring what we say. If you go against the government's mandates, etc., you sense it, that's it. So now we can show the, what is really happening because on YouTube they can't bullshit anything. A thousand dislikes opposed to 209 likes. So this is a real story. This is what the New Zealand public really think. All the media are suppressing everything. They're suppressing what we think and feel about what is happening. That's what they're doing. They're lying about the numbers. They're lying about everything. They're uh, lying by omission. They're not telling us what is happening in the rest of the world. They're not telling us about the deaths linked to the vacuum. They're not telling us the full story. We're being suppressed. And now we're being forced into taking something we don't want to take. They initially said, no, this is not true. We're not going to use certificates. We're not going to use mandates. They said that, yeah, and they said because Disregard any of that information because it's misinformation. It's disinformation is what they said. We said. You just watched the video. And now they're telling you, yes, that is what is happening. So, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what's going on here. That's the video, guys. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share the video. Let me know your comments. And I want to make more videos, so the channel may be shadow banned. But I'll keep trying. Cheers. Bye.